Ew, hey everybody, Chuck here on a Saturday morning. Last night was a long one. That's all I'm going to say. So my pick for today from October 15th, 2009. What is a hangover, really? We talk about hangovers, science behind them, and how to fix them. I'll give you a hint. Bananas. Welcome to Stuff You Should Know, a production of iHeartRadio's How Stuff Works. Hey, and welcome to the podcast. I'm Josh Clark. With me is Charles Chuckers Bryant. And that means this is stuff you should know, right? Yes, the over 21 years old Chuck Bryant. Yeah, that's a that's a big deal for this one, Chuck. We're just going to go ahead and COA right now. Say that this is about drinking, and if you're under 21, you should not drink. Chuck, have you ever consumed an alcoholic beverage? I have. And How if was you're it? Over, still COA. If you're over 21, you should drink responsibly. Yes, don't drink and drive. Um, if you have a Heavy problem... But yeah, heavy machinery is a big one. If you have a problem, you can contact Alcoholics Anonymous. Right. I've always wanted to test that one, get really plowed and just sit down behind a bulldozer. Or a forklift. I always imagine forklifts with heavy machinery. I go straight to the dozer. Wow. So, yes, I have had an alcoholic beverage before. How, what was your experience with it like? Did you feel a little lightheaded, a little crazy, a, a little, little uninhibited? Giddy. I wanted to kiss somebody. Did you end up kissing anybody? I did. I kissed my dog. Didn't you make out with a friend's sister at a U2 concert once? I did. Were you under the effects of alcohol during that time? I was. Okay. This was in 1992. Give me a break. Chuck, did you end up with a hangover? That day? Yes, I did. The same day? The next day. Yeah. Sure. So how'd you feel? Uh, I felt I had a headache. I had a poor sense of well-being. Uh, I had sensitivity to light and sound, diarrhea, loss of appetite, trembling, <laughs> nausea, fatigue. You had the whole list, huh? Dehydration, anxiety, trouble sleeping, weakness. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's a bad hangover right there. <laughs> That's all the symptoms. You know the one that always gets me the worst whenever I have a hangover is the loss of the sense of well-being. I feel like I am right there on the edge of danger. Everybody's gunning for me. I, I feel horrible than really next day. yeah it's really bad it really i've always assumed it affects my serotonin levels sure. although i didn't see anything in this article about that right i thought i was gonna have to get taken to the hospital in portland oregon one time did you yeah the next day emily asked me it was a friend's wedding she said you okay do you like need to go to the hospital and i went maybe <laughs> <laughs> and i was serious wow so uh, let's talk about this, Chuck. What, yes. What are the mechanisms that lie behind the cursed and dreaded hangover? Visalgia. Yeah. Is that the, the correct pronunciation? That's how I took it. That's the medical formal, medical name for hangover is visalgia. Yeah, and it comes from a uh, Norwegian word for uh, uneasiness following debauchery, sure. kvis. Mm-hmm. And a Greek word for pain, algia, which is weird. I've never seen uh, Norwegian and Greek put together. I haven't either. But yeah, you come up with visalgia. Can I say the, uh, the uh, Bible verse too? Yeah. Yeah, there's a Bible verse that talks about hangovers. It's uh, Isaiah 5.11. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning that they may follow strong drink. In other words, I feel real sorry for you that you had to get up early if you got hammered last night. Yeah. Truer words have never been written in the Bible. Loose, transa- loose translation there. Yeah. So, um, so, okay, so we've got that down. Mm-hmm. We have the uh, word origin and a Bible quote, as is pretty much so we start every show. For whenever you talk about a hangover, <laughs> yeah. right? So what's going on there, Chuck? Well, there's a bunch of things. Um, let's go ahead and start with uh, vasopressin. Yeah, here's, here is, by the way, everyone, a, a cocktail party conversation tidbit. So at your next cocktail party, you might want to just bring this up? Uh-huh. Okay. It might be kind of depressing to bring this up, actually, at a cocktail party. Well, this is, the, this is how you explain breaking the seal, which I know that you have experienced. Sure. It's crazy. Once you, once you urinate, and we're going to stick to the clinical terms here, Chuck. Right. All right? Let's keep it above the breaking board. Breaking the seal? That's clinical? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, uh, once you urinate that first time after you've uh, started drinking, it seems like you just keep going and going and going, and you can't stop. And you actually can't, right? Right. So vasopressin. Vasopressin, yes. When you drink uh, booze, uh, it enters your bloodstream, and the pituitary gland uh, blocks the creation of vasopressin. And without this, your kidney starts 
sending water straight to your bladder, basically. Right, to the tune of uh, four times more yeah. than you actually drink. So you drink 250 milliliters of alcohol, mm -hmm. uh, you can shoot out up to 1,000 milliliters or a liter. Is that the clinical term, too? Shoot out. <laughs> yeah, so that's no mistake. If you've ever had a few beers and you're thinking, wow, this is so weird, I used the bathroom and now I can't stop, that's vasopressin right there. Right, um, and that's called the diuretic effect. Um, as the the um, presence of alcohol increases mm -hmm. in the bloodstream, um, you expel a lot more water, right. right? But you're not just expelling water. Also, we should say this leads directly to dehydration. If sure. you're expelling four times more liquid than yeah. you're consuming, brother, you're getting dehydrated. Yeah, which is one of the signature uh, uh, results of the hangover, and you get the headache because of that and other things too. You do, and the headache, we've talked about this before. I don't remember where, so we probably shouldn't, you know— try to come up with a time stamp, right. but um, when you have a hangover, your brain actually shrinks. Yep. The next day, the other organs in your body are like, you, brain, you've got a bunch of water. Give I'm me thirsty. some of that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the water um, is shuffled from your brain to other organs, yep. causing your brain to actually shrink in size, yep. which pulls on the membranes that connect it to the skull, the meninges. Right. And you know what? When you have a really bad hangover, you wake up and you feel like, the membranes of your skull are being pulled in it, different it directions. It definitely feels like that, yeah. So when I read this, I was like, oh, so that's what that is. Or like there's a 400-pound a ham-fisted man with hair on his <laughs> knuckles, like doing little twirls in your head, you right. know? Yeah. Have you ever, uh, speaking of breaking the seal, I, I don't think they did this in Athens at Georgia, but I know some friends at Georgia Southern, there were bars there that had uh, the drink till you pee for free promotion. Have you ever heard of those? No, but it sounds awesome. Basically, at like starting at 6 o'clock, they monitor the bathrooms, and everyone in the bar gets to drink for free until the first person in the bar goes to the bathroom. Yeah, I don't think they have that in Athens. Yeah. Or they didn't when I was there. And, of course, because it's you know a college, there's like dudes peeing in uh, beer pitchers in the corner. Sure. You know, just to keep not, – to not have to pay the $2. Whether, whether or not there's <laughs> that you know uh, contest or right. promotion. So it's science. Science. Uh, so, okay, that's vasopressin, right? Yes. Resulting in dehydration. But when you're um, urinating everywhere, every which way, whether it's in a beer pitcher or otherwise, right? Um, you're also expelling a lot of other needed stuff. Yes. Like electrolytes. Say salt. Potassium. Salt, potassium, uh, magnesium. Uh -huh. And these all affect how your like, cells function, how your muscles function. Right. And you're getting rid of it without putting it back in, so you're going to feel lousy. Yes, indeed, you are going to feel lousy. So you're dehydrated. You've lost electrolytes, right? Uh, and the electrolyte imbalance is really important. Um, if you have too much salt and your electrolyte imbalance is too high, mm -hmm. uh, you die. Sure. Um, if you have too little, you get the shakes. Right. The tremors, mm -hmm. which uh, I understand is the most uncommon symptom of hangovers, which makes me nervous because I get the shakes just about every time the next day. <laughs> I've never gotten the shakes. What? I've never gotten the shakes. Wow. It also points out in this article that hangovers are subjective. So for each person, you know, they might experience different, like, oh, I've never had a hangover or, but oh, all lucky, I get is thirsty. When you get the shakes and uh -huh. you have a loss of a sense of well-being... Yeah, that's like Nick Cage and uh, Leaving Las Vegas. Kind of. Wow. Yeah. I, I've always been like, wow, that'd be great to have a grocery cart in a liquor store. <laughs> what a great scene. Uh, should we talk about glycogen real quick, too? Yeah, that's another thing you lose. Yes. Um, the Glycogen is a, is a key energy source, and uh, it, turn, it, it goes to the liver and turns into glucose. Is that correct? Right. Well, the liver turns it into glucose. Oh, and then sends it out Basically, once again via the urine. Basically, your liver's like, what the heck is going on? And just right. does something, and all of a sudden, you've just lost all of your energy. Right. Store. I'll just pee everything out, just to be sure. Exactly. Basically, is what's going on. Yeah. And that actually accounts for like the, the weakness the next day. Uh-huh. Fatigue. Uh, fatigue. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, that's not, that's not the only thing that accounts for fatigue. Um, you don't sleep very well after a night of heavy drinking. Glutamine. Yes. You have glutamine, uh, which is a uh, another. It's actually a stimulant, uh -huh. um, natural stimulant. Yes, which is the only good kind of stimulant. <laughs> right. Um, and uh, when you 
drink alcohol, mm-hmm. the production of this natural stimulant is actually blocked. Right. So uh, when you stop drinking, e.g. go to sleep, right. your body s- tries to make up for lost time and overproduces glutamine. So it means you're not getting as good a sleep. Exactly. And the next day you also feel restless and anxious. Right. Um, maybe you get the shakes. Sure. That's another cocktail party tip. Uh-huh. If you know the, if you start saying all these things at your next cocktail party, you probably won't be invited back to the next cocktail party. Though would be I don't my know. Guess. I think you could wow some people. It depends on how cool your cocktail party. I guess I, I could are. see them all saying though, like, "Why are you telling us all these awful things about drinking?" Unless well, it, my kind of cocktail like party, everyone would be like, AA "This is great." Oh, yeah. Pour me another one. Right. Screw glycogen. <laughs> Screw vasopressin. So what else, Josh? Well, uh, we could talk about the impurities of liquor. Okay, well, the, diff- the different uh, alcohols. Yeah, Let's pretty talk much about the that. rule of thumb is the darker the alcohol, the more impure it is, and mm-hmm. therefore the, the uh, heavier the hangover. Yes, which is why uh, I think everyone pretty much knows that like your worst alcoholics that like, start drinking every morning when they wake up, they're probably drinking vodka. Yes, it's actually a good thing to drink if you are an alcoholic yes. because you're going to be able to be as close to a functional alcoholic as possible. Right. How about that study with the bourbon? Yeah. thirty. They did a uh, study between bourbon and vodka, and uh, 33% of the people who drank uh, amount of bourbon relative to their body weight had a severe hangover, and only 3% mm-hmm. had a hangover when they drank vodka. That's a big vodka, drop. Vodka, white wine, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, light rum. Yeah, uh, gin. Yeah. Sure. Conversely, dark rum. Right. Is bad. Uh, Red wine. Light tequila is good. Mm-hmm. Basically, if it's dark, it's gonna kill you. I'm in bad shape then because I'm, you know me, I'm a bourbon, red wine, beer guy. That's funny. I'm like the whatever's in the glass guy. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. You're fun to have at the cocktail party because you're not picky. <laughs> no. As long as they don't run out of ice. Totally not. As long as there's not a cigarette butt floating in it, I'll right. drink it. Eh. And then sometimes even then. <laughs> uh, um, that, don't think that hasn't happened before, Chuck. Oh, yeah. Uh, basically, what I took from this article is when you drink, you are poisoning your body uh-huh. through conningers, through mm-hmm. through impurities in the alcohol, but also through the body's natural processes of breaking down al- alcohol, too. Right. It actually, there's a, there's a byproduct produced when uh, the liver metabolizes alcohol mm-hmm. um, called acetaldehyde. Yeah, take this one, because this kind of... I read it like three times, and I was still a little lost. Okay, Chuck. Allow me. Please. So, basically, when the liver metabolizes alcohol, it produces a byproduct that's a toxin called acetaldehyde. Okay. And acetaldehyde is actually more toxic to the body than alcohol itself, which right. is crazy. Yeah. But we have a natural mechanism for neutralizing acetaldehyde called, appropri- appropriately enough, acetaldehyde dehydrogenase. Appropriately, So that stuff goes and attacks the acetaldehyde, right? Mm-hmm. Then we have this other stuff that is called glutathione. Right. Right? And it contains high levels of a substance called cysteine. Mm-hmm. And cysteine actually is attracted to acetaldehyde. So the two things combine, acetaldehyde dehydrogenase and the cysteine in the glutathione uh, combine to neutralize the acetaldehyde, right? Right. And it does it pretty quickly. Um, you you are going to feel some ill effects, but the less you drink, the easier it is for these two substances to neutralize this byproduct as the alcohol is okay. metabolized. Okay, you yeah, with me yeah, so yeah. far? Yeah, makes sense. Here's the problem. You have a limited store of glutathione in your liver. Right. So you use it up pretty quick. And women have even less than men, correct? Exactly, which accounts for why women tend to have uh, more harsh hangovers right. or harsher hangovers than men. Sure. Not just body weight, although that does matter. Right. Um so you use up your glutathione stores, and once you do that, your blood is just basically circulating this toxin, acetaldehyde, uh-huh. while the liver generates more glutathione. Hence, you've got this horrible hangover, and right. why, ultimately, time is the only remedy for it. Yeah, well, let's get to that in a second. Let's get to the remedies. Let's talk about liquor before beer, never fear, 
or is it the other way around? Beer before liquor, never sicker. Never sicker. Yeah, There's you're right. A little bit of truth to that, turns out. Uh-huh. Uh, because I love it when folk uh, sayings don't be true. Totally. Um, it turns out that the carbonation in beer uh, speeds up the absorption of alcohol. So if you start with beer, your body's going to have, and then move on to liquor, your body is, in fact, going to have a harder time processing those toxins. Mm-hmm. Even though... There's a certain age. My friend Justin and I, you know Justin. Mm -hmm. We were talking about this a few years ago. Someone was remarking about, we had a big night out and like, oh, was it liquor before beer, beer before liquor? I can't remember. And I just said, you know what? Doesn't matter anymore. No, you're going to be hurting. You reach a certain age and it either doesn't affect you or it's going to affect you no matter what. Those are college rules. I've noted through my own personal observations Mm -hmm. um, that at about age 24, you you start getting really severe hangovers. I haven't figured out exactly why yet, uh-huh. but it, that seems to be about the age when you switch over from, I can do this constantly, to, oh, God, why? Why? I've got the shakes. I have a loss of sense of well-being. Right. Yeah. I'm vomiting. I have diarrhea. I don't know why. Maybe that's when puberty ends. There's something to do with hormones still <laughs> floating around in the body. Buddy, if your puberty ended at 24, then... Uh, puberty I, does end in your 20s. Really? Uh-huh. Yeah. My puberty ended when I was like 14. I know. Hi, I'm Chuck. But it started when I was seven, so. Hi, I'm Chuck. <laughs> Age seven. Uh, where are we now? Are we talking about vomiting? Yeah. <laughs> Turns out that that actually does help. And also, Chuck, um, since uh, we have a drinking game based on this and we're talking about hangovers, allow me. Okay. Chuck, 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 Chuck. That should keep them for a little while. <laughs> Go ahead, Chuck. Uh, alcohol, what's going on there is it is indeed better to vomit because when uh, alcohol is absorbed directly through the stomach, and when that happens, your the lining of your stomach is going to become irritated and say, hey, thanks for putting all this poison in me. Yeah. And um, it's going to start secre- uh, secreting hydrochloric acid. Right, and the hydrochloric acid is actually what makes you vomit. Um, right, your, it sends messages to the brain that yeah, says the, the expel. The stomach is really connected to the brain via hormonal mm-hmm. signals. Big time. Which don't necessarily end after puberty. Right. And um, yeah, your stomach says, you've got to get rid of this stuff. And bleh, Yep, and bleh. it turns out that's, you know, you probably shouldn't bleh. make yourself throw up because that's dangerous. It could become a problem. If you're drinking so much and you're making yourself throw up, then... <laughs> you probably do have a problem. You, sh- you should check into a, a clinic or something. Sure. Check into uh, Promises in Malibu. If you got the cash. But it will make you feel a little better because obviously your body is not going to have to process whatever alcohol is still in your stomach. Mm-hmm. So there you have it. Uh, what are we on to now, buddy? I think we're, we kind of nailed what it is. So should we talk about some of the, the cures that people spout? Yeah, there are plenty of hangover cures. Everybody's got one. Yeah, and actually, I'm surprised to find that some of them actually are real. Now Mm -hmm. that you understand what causes a hangover, you can actually identify what will help cure a hangover. Sure. Because really what's going on is you've expelled electrolytes. Yeah, it's biology. You've expelled, exactly, you've expelled your um, natural energy stores. Uh Uh-huh. You are dehydrated. Right. And your brain is shrunk. It's shrunk. Yeah. Sure. So what do you do to make yourself feel better? Chuck, my personal favorite is hair of the dog. Will that help me or no? Uh, it will not. You know where that comes from? Uh, it's the Bible again, isn't it? No. Nazareth? Mi- uh, medieval times, though. The hair of the dog that bit you. Supposedly, if you got bit by a rabid dog, you would take some of that dog's hair and apply it to your wound, and that would cure you. This is the same culture that buried a cat at midnight to cure wars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So just like that is false, hair of the dog, it's false as well. Having a drink the next day to make yourself feel a little bit better will not work. It might make you feel a little bit better in the, in the short term, but ultimately you're just adding more toxins that your body's going to have to process, and you're kind of just staving off the inevitable hangover. Um, Unless you just drink all day again. Sure. And then you'll have the hangover the following day. <laughs> Double hangover. Yeah, exactly. Um, Unless you just keep going until you die. Yeah. And then it never catches up with sure. you. You <laughs> won the game. <laughs> I was taking a walk with Emily yesterday with the dogs. Mm-hmm. This shows how twisted I am. And I saw it was 8 o'clock in the morning, 7.30 in the morning, something like that. And there was a, a guy down the street from us in the parking lot, you know, cracking his first King Cobra. Mm. And I said, you know what, Em? I said, 99 times out of 100, I see those people and I think, God, 
how could you live your life like just getting bombed from the moment you wake up every day? Mm-hmm. I said, but every once in a while, I think, what a way to live. You're right. They <laughs> and she said, uh-huh. she said, what is wrong with you? Basically. <laughs> And we kept she walking. keeps you in line, doesn't she? Well, she doesn't let me get up and get drunk every day, if that's what you mean. Yeah, it's keeping you in line. Yeah. Okay, she does. Um, Chuck, one of the things that kills me is drinking coffee. I learned a long time ago uh-huh. that if I ever have a hangover, I stay away from coffee. So I was surprised to find in this article that actually it does have some benefits. Agreed. Which are? Uh, it will actually um, alleviate your headache a little bit because it's caffeine and that's a vasoconstrictor. So it reduces the uh, your blood vessels. It reduces the swelling. Uh-huh. So that'll help a little bit. It'll help cure the headache some. But it'll dehydrate you. Because it's a diuretic. Because it's a diuretic. Which is how you really got into this trouble in the first place. So stop being stupid. I would say coffee coffee. along with a lot of water might be a good idea. Yeah, possibly. That's just me. Right. Okay, so what else? Uh, Fatty fatty food, fried food the next day. Yeah, which is odd because I I know I crave fried food the next day. Cheeseburger. Me too. uh, Bacon chili cheeseburger. Dude, Emily eats. Two bacon chili cheeseburgers. Emily eats like two hamburgers a year and they're on hangover days. Yeah. She doesn't eat beef at all. When she wakes up with a really bad hangover, she's like quarter pounder. That's very, it's strange because obviously she's not the only person who experiences that craving, but that doesn't necessarily help and could actually make you vomit. It could tip the scales when you've got a bunch of hydrochloric acid in your stomach. Right. But it could help if you ate a bacon chili cheeseburger or two bacon chili cheeseburgers (laughs) before you started drinking it. Why? Because uh, it contains oil and the fat and the grease will line your stomach. Mm Mm-hmm. And, uh, it takes pr- longer to digest. Absolutely. And in fact, in the Mediterranean, they have long uh, drank a little bit of olive oil before imbibing. Yeah. It's an old thing they do there. I'm not trying that. I'm not either. I like olive oil, but I'm not going to drink a tablespoon of it. No, me neither. Okay, uh, how about a banana? I'm just going to pull that one out of my head. Out of your banana tree. Um <laughs> Remedy. Yes, okay. Loaded with potassium, uh, electrolytes, and... Yes, because remember, you lose potassium, which is an electrolyte. So if you can restore the balance... So banana will help your hangover, as will eggs. Yes. Since we're on breakfast. Because they contain cysteine, Mm -hmm. right? Which is something that's attracted to acetaldehyde. Right. So eggs and a banana... And water would be a great way to start your morning if you had a hangover. Not just water, but water loaded with sugar and salt, actually. Right, because the carbonation it would do the same thing as it did with the beer. Right. Beer okay. before liquor. So you want uncarbonated water loaded with salt, mm-hmm. sugar. Not a Red Bull. No, because it has caffeine. So Not an energy drink. Uncarbonated, non-caffeine water mm-hmm. with salt and sugar, which... I think I just described a, a sports drink. Right. Right? A banana and some eggs. Or you know what else you can do what? instead of water? Put some fruit juice in there. <laughs> nice. Fruit juice. <laughs> fruit juice is uh, the, kind of, the kind of sugar you want. Fructose and uh, studies have shown that it increases the rate at which your body gets rid of the toxins. And uh, that's a good idea. It also gives you vitamins, of course. Okay. What about, um, say, Excedrin, acetaminophen? Acetaminophen is, uh, well, you, you want to avoid Excedrin because it has caffeine. Right, which can help, but ultimately no. Right. And acetaminophen, I believe you don't want to take because that can mess with your liver. Ultimately, yeah. If it, you have alcohol in your system. If you take acetaminophen for a hangover, you are um, probably going to feel a little better. Uh, actually, you'll probably feel a lot better, but in the long run, your liver's going to fall apart. Yeah, you're doing your body damage. You're going to expel that through your urine. So what you want to do is get a non-caffeinated anti-inflammatory prostaglandin inhibitor. <laughs> which is uh, also known as aspirin. Yeah. Which is good. So aspirin will help. It's shown that uh, prostaglandin actually uh, wreaks havoc on your body during hangover. So if you take a prostaglandin inhibitor, mm-hmm. you're going to feel a lot better. And apparently there have been studies that show, yes, aspirin helps. Yeah. Especially if you take uh, one 
before you go to bed, mm-hmm. and you take two when you wake up. But beware, people with tender stomachs often vomit from aspirin. Right. You know what my cure is? What? Let's talk about each other's cures. Have you got one? Um, Surely you do. What do I do? You want to hear mine? Yeah. Mine is, my deal is I can't sleep in anymore. Doesn't matter if I was out till three in the morning, I'm still going to wake up at seven. It's just the way it is when you're old. You'll, you'll experience this one day. Uh, I get up at seven like I normally do, and I drink, I pound like three or four glasses of water, uh-huh. take a couple of aspirin, and then I get right back in bed and see if I can get like another hour or two of sleep. And then I wake up and I yeah, feel great. that works crazy well. Mm-hmm. Um, it especially works with Advil if you take a couple Advil. Yeah. And you have even like a half hour, preferably an hour oh, yeah. extra to sleep. Mm-hmm. For some reason, Advil always makes me sleepy. It makes me fall asleep very easily. Uh-huh. Never figured out why. But yeah, you wake up an hour later and you are set. Yeah. It's a great one. Because sleep is only real, real uh, key to curing a hangover, they say. Yeah. I, so, well, time. My, well, that, that's usually what I rely on is time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I pound a few Coca Colas in the morning, which is not good for me, right. but it works, right? <laughs> and black, then, black aspirin uh, is that what they say? Yeah, and then I don't make eye contact with anybody because they're all out to get me. <laughs> That's how I make it through the day when I have a hangover. So. Sure. And again, we should say, uh, please don't find any of this funny, entertaining, or amusing if you're 21 years or older. And if you are 21 years or older, please find it amusing responsibly. Right. Uh, we should talk about some of these over-the-counter, like, anti-hangover pills that you can buy. You heard of these? Yeah. Like chasers? Yeah. They're they're basically multivitamins, and here's the deal. Well, some are activated carbon, which can work. True, true. But here's the deal. If you, if you read on the package, it'll say something like this. Um, drink a full glass, 12-ounce glass of water before you start drinking and take a pill. Mm-hmm. And then after your second or third drink, drink another glass of water and take another pill and mm-hmm. then do that again. Then before you go to bed, drink a glass of water with a pill and then wake up and drink a glass of water with a pill. Right. So you're basically taking a vitamin, downing uh, tons of water, which is... And that's the key is the water, the right? The key, yeah. You're hydrating yourself. So it's a, a bit of a ripoff. Right. Um, but not necessarily because it is recommended that you do take a multivitamin not true. Uh, the next morning. But just take a multivitamin. Don't pay for some hangover cure. You know what else helps is to actually be cognizant and not a total drunk while you're drinking. Yes. Um, If you drink glass-for-glass water for alcohol, number one, uh, it keeps you hydrated. But number two, it also paces your drinking Yeah. so that your body has more time to process Mm -hmm. this alcohol. It's not just like boom, 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 you know? I've gotten better at that. Have you? Oh, yeah, sure. I try to be, uh, if I have like a big night out, I try to be pretty aware of... Uh, drinking a couple glasses of water here and there, and I always will pound two or three glasses before I go to bed. Good for you, Chuck. That's the way to do it. All right, so there you have it. That's the hangover, right? Uh, yeah. A couple other things you can do beforehand is eat. Uh, obviously, alcohol in an empty stomach is, yeah. is going to get you there quicker, mm, yeah. but it will uh, get you sicker and make you feel worse. <laughs> you love rhyming. So uh, water, what else do you say? Multivitamins. Drink in moderation, of course, is the key with everything. Watch what you're drinking. Red wine, bourbon, it's going to make you feel bad. Yeah. It tastes sugary sweet on your tongue, <laughs> but it'll make you feel worse. <laughs> yeah. I'm in trouble, though. I wish I could learn to drink vodka. I just don't dig oh, it. Oh, fuck. It's so wonderful. Is it nice? Yeah. I, I drink gin and tonics occasionally during the uh, summertime months. but I can't drink those. Gin actually makes me crazy. I have a self-imposed ban on gin. I won't drink it. I don't allow myself to drink it because it makes me nuts and apparently i'm not the only one in the 17th century uh the uk actually banned uh or i should say england banned really gin because it was making everybody so nuts yeah yeah so gin was banned in england for a little while because people went like i did sure you know different alcohols do that tequila is notorious for uh making people uh violent and act out of sorts never had a problem with tequila me neither my buddy scotty has a, a red wine thing completely personality shift when he drinks it really he, yeah he becomes a completely different person that's so odd you know that's alexander weird. the great died from a red wine drinking competition really uh-huh one of his uh, soldiers challenged him to it and they apparently drank like five million gallons a piece and alexander the great went off and died boy i bet the alcohol back then was rough too man yeah you know yeah they loved their wine those are the good old days well, if you want to pr- learn absolutely every last detail there is to know about a hangover, you should read this fine, fine article by uh, freelancer Lacey Perry 
called How Hangovers Work. You can just type in hangover in the handy search bar at howstuffworks.com. Also, check out our kiva.org page. 2500 bucks and growing. So far, yeah. Very um, proud of you guys. You can help fund a loan for a, an entrepreneur in a developing country for as little as 25 bucks. And best part, you get it back. We have a team that's uh, to be found at www.kiva.org slash team slash stuff you should know. Right. And if that's too hard, you can click on community and then search stuff you should know. And we've been posting a link at the bottom of every one of our blog posts. Too. Yes. We've got close to 100 members and about 2,500 bucks raised, and it's pretty cool. Let's do listener mail. Let's do listener mail. Okay, Josh, I'm going to call this uh, Don't Kill Me, I'm Just the Enumerator. Okay. <laughs> this is a good one. Uh, hi, guys. Hope this finds you well. My name is Mark, and I live in Fishkill, New York, which is an interesting town. Uh, I was listening to the Gross National Happiness podcast, and you mentioned the census worker being killed. I thought I'd send an email. Uh, I was a census bureau worker in 2000. It was a, I was a carefree 19-year-old on summer break. My friends and I saw the ad in the paper and took the exam and became official enumerators, including a shiny plastic badge from the Treasury Department. Cool. To boot, he says. Uh, So our task was to travel door-to-door and uh, talk to the people who didn't return their survey. Some people got the short form, some got the long form, and from what I remember, the forms were assigned at random. Usually the long formers didn't mail them back in, and uh, that's who they usually had to uh, confront. Did it go shake down? It shake them down. Uh, People were downright mean when I knocked on their door. One (laughs) This is a good one. One man asked me to hold on for a second. He closed the door. And within a few minutes, I heard the garage door open, and he drove out and waved. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Such a jerky move. Uh, one woman answered the door with a baby in her arms, shouting something at me. I heard dogs barking, and the next thing I knew, she had let the dogs loose on us, and I was running safely back to my uh, the safety of my Buick Regal. Uh, I quickly learned my lesson, and when someone would open the door I w- and give me the skinny on their neighbors uh, who didn't mail their forms back in, I was happy. And I was even happier when it was a grandma who would offer me a cold drink. Because, mm-hmm. you know, the old folks, they're just like, come on in. Let's talk for a while. I'm so lonely. Exactly. Um, I did not know, however, that uh, enumerators were killed. I must have missed that part of the training. <laughs> uh, most of the rants would be anti-government. They would say I was the man, told to get off their property, and all the expletives that go with it. It's not be- It's not easy being an enumerator, so give them a shout out. So shout out to all you enumerators out there. Hey, hey. And that's pretty much it. He uh, said I thought I'd chime in. Actually, I was chiming in this morning in the car and then realized that I was alone. <laughs> so Mark, I'm so lonely. Mark, the former enumerator, is a funny guy, and he says, by the way, podcast suggestion, how hippie Rob works. Ooh, that's a good one. That would be a great one. Yeah. That would be I'm, an I'm audio I'm still book. trying to track him down. Sure. Yeah. So thanks, Mark, and good luck if you uh, enumerate in the future. And uh, all you enumerators out there counting heads, I'm sorry. I didn't know it was so rough on you. And uh, let's see, if you're an enumerator or a denominator or you know the current whereabouts of Hippie Rob, put it in an email to stuffpodcast at howstuffworks.com. Stuff You Should Know is a production of iHeartRadio's How Stuff Works. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. 